There are so many dark clouds in modern physics. Let's go back to classic physics of early 1900s and ask classic questions for elemental particles. Maybe it is time to revisit quantum mechanics and theory of general relativity. This is our new direction of physics. Today we're going to continue our uh, new direction of physics. This is uh, video three. It's about the theory I'm going to present. It's a self-interacting field theory. Yeah. In the last video, we talked about uh, if the field in the space-time travels in the space-time like all other particles or like photon. So field has to be self-interacting. Field has to be self-interacting. The last video we conclude that uh, if we allow the field to self-interacting, so there is a boundary where field can be trapped. That means the object, the matter, and the field are all trapped. Okay, when it has a escape velocity, speed of light. Okay, so the self-interacting uh, term it's a long linear term and it has two solutions. The strength of the two solutions different by the 10 to the 39, factor of 10 to the 39. One is very big, another one is very small. So if you have some physics background, you would think I'm trying to put the strong interaction and uh, gravitation into the same equation. Also that uh, the gravitation the constant and the strong interaction also it's about a factor of this much. So from this video we're going to start derive the we're going to start from the Lagrangian and to derive its Euler equations that's similar to Newton's law of gravity okay. We will see, try to see the difference so this video it's uh, the Lagrangian for self-interacting field because the last uh, video we only talked about assumptions and implications it's not a it's a high school guessing okay so now we're back into like graduate school of physics department we're talking about Lagrangian Euler equations so let's uh, talk about Newton's law of gravity okay so the Lagrangian for Newton's law of gravity is this. It has a G, gravitation constant in here. Okay? I mean you derive it, you do, based on this Lagrangian, you derive the equation. That's Newton's law of gravity. Okay? So from the Lagrangian to that, now what we're going to do, we're going to modify the Lagrangian to include the self-interacting term in this and to derive another equation similar to this. Okay, so that's this video it's about. So this is the source from Newton's law of gravity. This is the field, how it dissipates, how it travels. Okay, we remember we were talking about the field goes out, how it goes out, okay. Whether it's come back, you see there's no field to come back. That's why you have a source, you have a source term, you have field distribution in the whole space okay so the first term is a flux term that's how it radiates out the second term this term is the source term so now if we want to do self-interacting that means our source has to have field because field field interaction so that means if we said okay we have a source it's a field. So field energy momentum density. It's that's where we have to add another term over here. Okay. So let's see. This is this is a very critical part for the self-interacting field theory. We need to include the field energy momentum into the equation. So let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do we have here? Is Newton's law of gravity okay that's the two terms we add another term over here okay why I add this I mean what's the reason I add this because we have a phi times the density that's material density field times the particle density that's the interaction term field and the matter interact that's a matter density times field that's a term okay 
So also that in the Maxwell equation, that's electromagnetism, we have the field times the current density, okay? So now my guess would be simple, okay? Field times the field energy momentum density. Because this field times matter density, field times current density, field times field energy momentum density. That's the only term I added in here. So this is different from Newton's law of gravity. We don't have a gravitation constant over here. So what we define a new phi, which is different from Newton's law, now we have a dimension. Because Newton's law, by introducing a gravitation constant over here, makes this non-dimensional. Now our phi has a dimension of mass over radius, okay? Mass over distance. So what I, the reason I didn't put g over here, because we want to add a term which we don't know. Let's back into the original dimension, okay? So you see that uh, this phi mu, phi nu, okay? It has a dimension of m square over r fourth. It's like m over r times m over r cube, okay? So this is like density. This is like the field, okay? So this is already half the rho phi because this is, this one has the same dimension as this one. But now if we introduce a phi, we need to divide by phi zero to normalize so that it has, has no dimension. Otherwise this term and this term has different dimension. You cannot add a mass and the distance together. That's like crazy, okay? So that's why we divide by phi zero. I mean, by doing that, what's interesting result will come out, okay? So phi is normalized by phi zero. We don't know phi zero yet, okay? That's now we have this, okay? The original one, self-interacting term. If we rewrite it, it became like that, okay? So this is our Lagrangian. We had a small difference compared with Newton's law of gravity. That's why I call this is self-interacting Newton's law of gravity. Because you have Newton's law of gravity plus a self-interacting term, which I'm not just guessing because that's the definition from all field interactions. But before this video, people only talk about matter field interaction, matter current, uh, the field and the current interaction. No field, field interaction, okay? This is the first time I'm proposing this. Let's see what we see over here, okay? So from the Lagrangian, we can determine the Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian, it's energy, okay? So we design that, okay? So what do we see that the energy momentum has this term in there, okay? So also the source term, we have this, okay? So that means I mean, we add in this term into the equation, so we have this term. That's normal, okay? We try to derive the Euler equations. So we have this one. That's the Euler equation, okay? We have this term, okay? We have this term. That's Newton's term. This self-interacting term. But if phi zero is divided on both sides, okay? and replace this by phi, okay? So what we see, phi zero come out to this side. That means one over phi zero, it's equals gravitational constant, okay? So, but I don't, we don't have the gravitational constant in the beginning. We just introduce a normalization factor for our phi field, okay, to make the dimension. I wasn't planned to have the constant. Now we derive that the constant is automatically come out from the equation. Instead of uh, Newton proposed it, okay, we have a constant. Let's divide by a dimension of constant. Okay, with this constant has dimension, okay? So what we see that we see the first term and this term, this is four pi g, <coughs> okay, rho. If we make phi equals one, 
okay, or closer to one, okay. So then this term became like Newton's term. This became Newton's term. Now we have an extra term, okay. This is from the self-interaction. What we can do, we can move this to this side. That means the field and uh, the source term. We have matter as a source and also field as a source. So field, field self-interacting, but unfortunately we have an extra term over here, okay? But this is interesting part, okay? Why it's the interesting part? <clears throat> Let's see what we have over here, okay? Let's uh, go back to phi zero is the maximum value of this closed object, because now we have a closed object. Compared with Newton's law of gravity, we have a boundary, okay? Because the inverse of the whole, whole, all the matter added together, okay? Matter distribution over distance added together, that's very close to one, okay? So this became Newton's law if we reduce that, okay? But what we see that, the new Lagrangian did not introduce gravitation constant, but it derived from that because we need to introduce a long dimension constant. And also it's interesting that, <clears throat> okay, so how the, I mean, how it relates to the gravitation constant. Because we have previous equation, the Euler equation, okay, if we have a, energy, we integrate over the whole part, that's our mass. What's happening now, because we can integrate the object, because beyond, they're not going to interact with the object, beyond the boundary. So what we can do is we can integrate the whole total energy everywhere. I add the, the, another extra row over here, because we have minus rho phi, okay, add it here, because we need to include the matter. Okay, so the field part plus the matter part add together, integrate over the whole object, we have the mass. But we have mass, sorry, this is phi zero, okay. We have a phi zero over here. So if we integrate, we have phi zero, we are integrate over the radius of the object, okay. So that's the first equation, the energy, if we integrate the whole object, it has the mass of the object. It has the phi zero, it has r. We have three variables. We have the mass, we have the phi zero, we have r, okay? Another condition, it's a boundary condition because the escape velocity is speed of light, where we can determine the object escape velocity, okay? What we can do is we can do this again. We allow that near the boundary, the escape velocity equals c. We found another equation. So, okay, now we have two equations related to each other with the mass, radius, and uh, the phi zero. Phi zero is related to the gravitational constant, okay? So that means we have two equations we can solve the relationship between the mass, the gravitational constant, and the radius, okay? So now it's a, a self-included equations. So now we don't have a constant, gravitation constant. It's we integrate with one of the gravitation constant. But now let's say, okay, Q, you're not talking about gravitation. Let's say, imagine we're talking about the nuclei. We do the same thing, okay? We talk about electron, we do the same thing. So everything, as long as it's a closed object, we do the integration. We'll find the, the gravitation constant or strong interaction constant or its radius or its mass relate to each other. So there's no longer a equation where no longer gravitation constant because this constant is related to the matter distribution. By the way, this is Marcus principle, okay? That means how the particle move within a closed system determined by the mass distribution. That's Marcus principle. Mark thinking the inertial, it's coming from the mass distribution of the object. Okay, so what we did is we derived the self-interacting Newton's law of gravity, which the object has a boundary, okay? The gravitation constant is related to the mass distribution 
and the mass and distribution. That's a market principle, okay? The self-interacting term is introduced, okay? So this is very critical, I mean, theory part. So anyway, what we have is over here, the radius, okay? The gravitational constant and the mass are related to, together. What we will see that, because what happened uh, in the black hole theory, okay? The Schwarzschild black hole is 2 gms m over r equals 1. We see that, okay? That's the black hole theory, okay? So we're gravitation constant, mass, radius, okay? They're related together, okay? So, I mean, you have a c square over here to make it long dimension, okay? So this is where we, we have, we hope to derive these, okay? Similar to these. But uh, what we're trying to do over here, this is, we have the self-interacting field theory. Let's see what this theory look like. The next video we're going to talk about, it's the how the self-interacting well, no, let's first write the self-interaction field equation into similar to Einstein's general relativity. I mean, Einstein's general relativity is based on Newton's law of gravity. Now we want to see my self-interacting Newton's law of gravity, how it's different from the Einstein's general relativity, okay? We will see that Einstein's general relativity missing a self-interacting term, okay? So now if we introduce the self-interacting term into general relativity, we will have a general relativity goes back to self-interacting theory. So what happened is general relativity, currently general relativity, it's, okay, it's a tensor extension of Newton's law of gravity, okay? Okay. So now we have uh, SI, self-interacting Newton's law, okay, of gravity, okay. That's different. So what's this theory look like? That's what we need to, to understand, okay. We have general relativity, which goes back to Newton's law of gravitation. Okay, so now we have a self-interacting Newton's law of gravity. So what the theory look like? Let's write this to compare with Einstein's general relativity. We will see that Einstein's general relativity missing some terms. Okay, so the, the next video we will also try that Hawking theory, okay, which is gravitational field theory, okay, how it's related to the strong interaction. Okay, so this is the first time I come up with the crazy idea. We use gravitation to calculate nucleon behaviors. Okay, so that's the next video. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.